Hi, I'm Matthew Puro, editor of Canadian Cycling Magazine. I'm here with Gerard Vrooman, uh, founder of Cervelo Bikes and now founder of Open Cycle, and we're here to d discuss his new hardtail. Uh, but first, uh, Gerard, can you tell me a bit about um, why mountain bikes after working with road bikes for such a long time? Well, because exactly for that reason, <laughs> after working with road bikes for uh, for a long time, it was uh, time to do something different. And of course, Phil and I have been working with Cervelo for, for 15 years and, and built that uh, and had a lot of fun on, on road bikes. And, and But at some point, you also feel, well, maybe if you know, uh, like to do something different and, and mountain bikes gave it the opportunity and also didn't want to go into some sort of competition with Cervelo, like it's uh, you know, a company that we spend uh, a lot of blood, sweat and tears on, on, on building and uh, it's dear to my heart so uh, I wanted to do something different and mountain bikes gave it the opportunity. Now, uh, what have you been able to take from your experience at Cervelo uh, into the, um, the new mountain bike at Open Cycle? I think on the company side, of course, you, you, you run, you know, together with a lot of people, a company for 15 years, you learn a lot about what you like and don't like and where your own strengths are. So from that, I certainly learned that I, I like building companies more than maintaining them and I like small and compact uh, organizations more than uh, big sprawling ones. Mm -hmm. So that, that was uh, that was very clear. And then on the, on the product side, it's... Um, it's a little tougher. I mean, there's just a, a way of thinking, of course, that um, you know we've developed over the years, and 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 that way of thinking is is very visible in in Cervelo designs, and so some of that thinking is now applied to mountain bikes, and so you see some similarities. But it's not like you can really copy something one on one from from a road bike to a mountain bike. But of course, the philosophy are are the same. And I, you know, when I'm designing road bikes, and I'm a big believer in having thin seat stays to create more comfort. Then of course, I'm still a believer in thin seat stays to create comfort when I'm designing a mountain bike. So in that sense, some things are are similar. But of course, the the conditions and the the parameters that you design around are are completely different. Your partner uh, at Open Cycle is. Uh, Andy Kessler. Now, how do you guys do? It's just the two of you in the company. How do you divide up? Uh, what's the division of labor at the company? He does all the work, and I get to do the interviews. So, no, but uh, you know, his his strength is in uh, in sales and in operations. So he can make everything uh, run like clockwork and make sure that uh, the product arrives on time with the retailers and and finding the right retailers and supporting them that way. I mean, he's been doing that for many years, and he's just really strong in operations. And that's, to be honest, that's my weakness. You know, I, I like the engineering side. I like to think of new new products and new ways to you know talk to our customers or whatever it is. But um, and so that's what I focus on. I focus really on the product. He focuses on on getting it to our customers. Now. You have one bike only for now at uh, uh, Open Cycle. How did you choose a 29er model out of the, the various models of, of mountain bike that are out there? Well, the hardtail was chosen because, of course, it's the closest to to my background in, in, in engineering a, a frame, uh, and because th there was this strong move towards 29ers, and I thought, well, uh, I think it's what people want, but the available hardtails really don't push the envelope yet the way it could be so it was a bit of an engineering challenge and uh, that was the initial idea that I had although right at the start I was challenged and people saying well 90% of the sales because this was in May 2011 90% of the sales are still 26 inch and you know you really should make a 26 not a 29 and so then in the end I uh, made a quick poll on the internet I, after my first meeting where I heard that I started to doubt it and so midnight I made this poll I went to sleep woke up the next morning had 200 answers and most people said uh, 29er is the way to go so that's how I knew that the customer was ready for 29er even if some of the companies were and then of course that's also understandable when you have companies that have a lot of money invested in molds for a 26 inch hardtail you know they may be a bit slow to react when the customer really wants something else so you did some very direct consumer research in in, in this area 
Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I remember spending 99 cents on that pole. You could get a free one as well, but the 99 cents gave you geolocation, so I could see that you know at least not all the all the answers were coming from one tiny country in Eastern Europe or something. I could see that it was a pretty widespread uh, group of people who had responded, and also this this desire for the 29er came from across you know Europe and North America and, and Australia as well. So um, yeah, it was. Uh, it's it's a quick and dirty way, but it works. You know, this is not a, a representative sample, maybe in the sense of uh, you know you can publish a peer-reviewed article in Science Magazine on it. But for me, it was good enough, and that okay, these are people who've responded, who follow me on Twitter or, or found out about the poll in some way, and those are the people that I have the ability to talk to. But those are also the people who, in the end, are probably most interested in the bike I'm going to produce. So it was good to get their feedback, and so what the customer wanted, combined with what I knew from, you know, my engineering. Uh, side of looking at ways that I wanted to do this 29er, it just added up to to doing that. Now there there are already quite a few uh, hardtail 29ers out there. What um, who's the customer or who's the type of rider who is going to be attracted to to this particular model that you've made? Well, I think there are oh, probably a lot of different different riders. I think the What's, what sets the bike really apart is, is the way it handles. Just there are some really nice uh, details on the bike and yes it's very light uh, but the way it handles is really what sets it apart. So we notice that when people test ride it they, they really love it and, the, and they, they usually purchase it. So um, you know for the background of these people most people are not racers. They certainly they're people who enjoy mountain biking are fairly serious about it but they don't necessarily race. Some do and it's, it's a great bike for racing but uh, we see it more in the marathon and, and just uh, you know cross-country riding uh, f you know for people who love mountain biking but not necessarily are, are competitive. Now let's talk uh, a bit about the the features of the bike. Now it has internal cable routing and what can you route internally with that uh, your model? Well, you can route everything internally, which is one of the reasons why we did it. So when we started out, you know, of course, we know that mechanical shifting exists now, electronic shifting is coming, hydraulic shifting exists from Acros, and some other people are working on it. So how do you get all of that integrated into a single frame? Uh, and the best way we believe to do that is internally. Uh, first of all, it prevents any harm on those parts, especially electronic cables, of course, can be quite uh, easy to, to damage, but also on the mechanical and hydraulic side uh, it's quite easy to get stuck behind something with a frame and, 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 and rip uh, a hose or, uh, or a cable. So what we do is we route it internally and then we have stops at the head tube and at the chain stays that uh, can be switched out depending on what kind of uh, you know cables or housing you run. So we have separate stops for mechanical uh, electronic and hydraulic and now also a separate one for XX1 or other uh, single chain ring setups and so that's the nice thing you don't have to change the frame all you have to change is those little stops and then you can run whatever system you want and it's all internally so it's nice and clean it's protected and frankly it looks good as well to, to not have these uh, these cables and hoses uh, hanging off as your frame. When do you think mountain bikers will uh, will actually go electric? Well, I mean, you can already buy uh, the, the KI2 system, so that's basically a Durace group that's been modified for a mountain bike. So, um, you know, people do that already. And uh, the advantages of electronic shifting, I think, are bigger in mountain bike than they are in road. So, uh, you know, for sure, uh, the companies are working on it, and uh, and they will introduce it uh, in in the next little while. I think hydraulic shifting is an interesting solution as well because it's really very very light and the system that Acros has made works very nicely so um, between those two I'm not sure if there's going to be a clear winner uh, but obviously you know given size I'm sure that once Shimano makes electronic it will be uh, quite popular. Now I understand there's a part of this bike even though you've been involved in the in the design very heavily but there's a part that is n not your favorite that you're not keen on what, what's that part? Well, I mean, what I don't like about bikes is the C2 collar. So when I designed this bike, I, I made sure from the start that I would 
come up with a better solution and in the end they didn't so it's the one the one thing that's still nagging me I tried a lot of different things but in the end none of it worked as well as the standard ugly uh, C2 collar so uh, it has a it has a I think quite a nice C2 collar but it's still a C2 collar so um, that's something that I couldn't fix but uh, I'll I'll keep working on it and, and I designed the the mold in such a way that I, if I come up with a better solution I can I can uh, the, the mold is modular, so I can make that that change and, and give an update to the frame. But uh, to be honest, I've I've lost hope a little bit that I'll come up with something smarter than what we have now. So we may not see it in version 2.0. Uh, no, I'm I'm afraid that uh, well maybe it is because 2.0 I think is probably uh, quite a ways away. Uh, we're pretty happy with how it is now, and 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 we don't have. Uh, we haven't had that, had that eureka moment yet to come up with a better C-tube collar or anything else, frankly. So you have uh, the one model, the hardtail. Um, are there any other um, mountain bike models in the works for Open Cycle? Well, we think that we would like to eventually bring out a full suspension bike, but only if we come up with something that that we feel is clever and, and that we should really do. So we don't need to bring out a full suspension bike. It's a small company, as you said, just Andy and I. So we're quite happy to just do the, the hardtail and, and uh, spend our time riding bikes instead of designing new ones. But uh, of course, we're, we're thinking about full suspension and if we come up with a, a good idea for full suspension, we'll definitely do it. But we just can't say if that's six months or six years from now. All we know is that we haven't found that you know that one thing yet that really uh, makes us excited about a, a full suspension solution, but it can come. As an engineer, does the, the, the full suspension, like there's a lot more going on there, are you any more attracted to that than a simpler uh, frame or is there something there with the, the more parts that, uh, that attracts you? Well, I mean, yes, I'm an engineer and so the, the full suspension attracts me from that point of view. On the other hand, you know, my motto is relentless simplicity, so, you know, a hardtail is simpler than a, than a full suspension frame. So, um, yes, I certainly like the design of uh, a full suspension and the challenges it offers, but uh, I, I, I really like simplicity as well, so I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't pick favorites there, I think. All right. Thank you very much, Gerard. Thank you.